Welcome to Inspire. Wow, last year's speech wasn't the greatest, but I would have expected a few more folks than this. Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Hmm. Where am I? Well, this doesn't seem right. Oh, so this is how we're gonna do it. Stand by, three, two, one. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you may be in the world, and welcome to Microsoft Inspire. Look, it's been a very different year, and this is a very different format, uh, but I'm excited to be here with all of you and to connect with so many of you around the world. Look, I wanna start uh, by having a moment of gratitude with each and every one of you. It has been one of the hardest years, uh, certainly of my professional career, and I know uh, for many of you the same. In fact, it was like two years in one. The first that was filled with really the pinnacle of growth, I think, that any of us have seen in this industry for certainly for many, many years. And we were all working at a maniacal pace, helping customers migrate to the cloud, use our new collaboration services and teams and our Dynamics products. So much great work was going on across the partner ecosystem. And then the second half of the year uh, brought about almost unimaginable change. Uh, really, really hard times for so many of our customers and many of you, our partners, supporting those customers in turn. We all jumped in uh, to really help and do whatever we could to help customers through these difficult times. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful to each and every one of you. You worked hard, you persevered, you demonstrated the greatest of tenacity and dedication uh, in supporting governments and hospitals and school systems to really get through uh, what was the most um, unthinkable impact to our society in a long, long time. So I'm grateful. Uh, I'm humbled to be here with each and every one of you, and I'm glad to call you a partner. Look, if this global pandemic has taught us anything, it's taught us that no business is 100% resilient, but that businesses that are fortified with some form of digital capability, some digital assets, are more resilient than others. Technology is at the center of how customers will survive these situations and how they will thrive in the future moving forward. And we need to come together as a partner ecosystem to help customers embrace technology to think the future forward. There are really three big things that we're helping customers do together as an ecosystem right now. First, we're helping them respond. And as digital first responders to physical first responders, we're helping technology solve problems um, to connect the world virtually to get through these difficult times. In terms of recovery, we're helping customers find great efficiencies. Like if it looked good to get out of your data center pre-COVID, it looks really good to get out of your data center now. So the growth of the cloud is still very important to helping customers achieve these economic goals and frankly, find new growth through innovation. Reimagining the future will be an imperative for every customer in every industry, customers large and small and around the world. And it's our job to help them embrace the digital future that will help this get done. If you think about it as an ecosystem, we've seen more digital transformation happen uh, out of necessity over the last two months than we've seen in the last two years alone. So if you think about it, we live in this world of remote everything uh, from how people uh, engage with their employees and engage with their customers and work through their operational challenges and even build new products. We are really helping that happen. If you take just the simple thing of empowering employees, getting every customer to the point where all of their employees have work from home capable devices, that they have teams to collaborate and work together more effectively, virtual desktop environments to use their business applications, and of course the security assets they need to defend against the bad actors that haven't slowed down in these difficult times. When it comes to engaging with customers, if you're not doing that in an omni-channel capacity today, you're probably not doing it at all. So our work together as an ecosystem to help customers engage with their customers, to use AI-driven business processes and data to become far more effective at rich and long-lasting engagement, super critical to everyone's future. 
And when it comes to operations and product development, we are living in a world where uh, everything from curbside pickup to lights out manufacturing will shape the future of how we think about business across all industries. So technologies like our IoT assets, our digital twin capabilities, of course, Azure as a core data platform and the best platform for our customers' data, these assets are critical for us in shaping the future forward. So if you think about it, our solution areas, our cloud capabilities, from modern workplace through security, business applications, apps and infra and data and AI, across Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365 and Azure, these are the ingredients that will help customers persevere in these difficult times. The world now needs us more than ever before. And I'm counting on all of you as our partners to help make that happen. Whether you have the consulting practices that bring these uh, virtual solutions to life or the assets and in, in, in intellectual property as an ISV or a SaaS provider, we need your help to address customers' needs now more than ever. And the world is counting on us. Look, we've been talking about digital transformation for a long time. And in fact, those capabilities, the things that we have built as an ecosystem will serve us well in helping customers right now because we know that any good digital transformation is simply business transformation that's empowered by technology. So the work we do to help customers with their vision and strategy, help them define their culture and their unique potential and build out capabilities, uh, really embracing tech intensity and skilling, these are the things that are critical now more than ever. Last year, when I got in front of you, I talked about democratizing digital and making sure that everyone has uh, the opportunity to have a digital experience and that everyone is enabled to participate in the digital economy. And that is, in fact, the future that we're living in right now. So in many ways, all of that preparedness, all of the skilling, the honing of the craft that you have done as a partner ecosystem is frankly more important than ever. I wanna talk about what I see coming next. And that is this notion of bringing purpose to digital efforts. I believe that all digital transformation projects moving forward will in fact be purpose-driven digital. And just so that we all share the same vernacular, purpose-driven digital in my meaning is the art and science of leveraging technology innovation to drive business and societal outcomes for good. You see, companies will seek purpose right now because purpose is what perseveres. Purpose as an individual, purpose as an entity or an organization, it's so mission aligned. It's so essential to, to, to why companies exist in the first place. And while everybody is shedding the nice to have for the need to have, they will goal seek on purpose driven efforts because those are the ones that will be longest lasting. So if I unpack this for you, I, I get really excited because if you see this, you'll see that it's actually everything we've been working towards as an ecosystem for so many years now. We've been talking about business outcomes, empowering employees, engaging with customers, optimizing operations, and transforming products. We've honed our craft through tech intensity and building skills. Now what's next to achieve these purpose-driven digital outcomes is to bring in the societal change, the long-lasting change for good, to embrace inclusiveness, to be trusted partners for our customers, to engage in activities that support fundamental human rights, to address the inequalities in the world and the social unrest, and then finally, to get back to the goals of sustaining the planet for the future so that the world is a better place, not just for our generation, but for generations to come. This is what's meant by purpose-driven digital, and I'm really excited about it because it's a unique opportunity for us to provide differentiation in market. We are the partner ecosystem. Microsoft is the company and you are the partner ecosystem that stands for making a difference, that stands for empowerment, that stands for making our customers successful in the long run. Look, every customer has a purpose. They might be struggling with it right now. They might be really working hard, make sure all voices are heard and they're listening to their own needs and what really defines them as a company. We have so much capability to help them, help them define that purpose, help them goal seek on the technology that will then empower that purpose to become reality. This is our calling as a partner ecosystem and I'm really excited for what comes next for all of us. 
So what's the common thread in all of this, and what does success look like? The answer to that is simple. Frankly, it's all of you, our partners, and our entire partner ecosystem. Look, when I look at our best success stories across all industries, customers large and small, partners are at the core of everything we do. Our best wins involve solutions from multiple Microsoft solution areas. They involve our device partners, our ISVs, our SaaS partners, our systems integration and consultancy partners, our cloud solution providers, our Azure expert partners. They involve all of you. And so we're going to have a little bit of fun here because I want to tell you some stories that give me confidence that we can make purpose-driven digital happen as an ecosystem. I've actually recorded four different success stories with partners from around the world and cross industry. And you get to choose your own adventure in this keynote and be a part of which direction I take it. So if you give, him, give me a minute here, I'm going to hop into CGI land and we're going to have a little bit of fun and you get to pick it. Okay, so our first story is about our partner Blue Yonder. They're a digital fulfillment platform who specializes in helping companies modernize their supply chain through cloud services, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. The global pandemic has significantly disrupted supply chains around the world, and the ability to move goods has become increasingly difficult. Blue Yonder's commitment to building sustainable operations while enabling supply chain resiliency is more important than ever. Our next story is about Elastic Run. This partner is building next generation transportation technology solutions that help empower the e-commerce and distribution industry across India. Elastic Run's app-driven variable capacity transportation network and last mile service platform connects small grocers with micro distributors who provide access to consumer packaged goods at fair prices, fulfilling their purpose to enable grocers and rural communities to participate in the digital economy. Our next story actually involves two partners working in concert together, Phoenix Software and Blue Prism Cloud. Phoenix Software is a managed service provider and licensing partner that specializes in driving strategies that reimagine how to bring people together, data and processes, and to create value and help organizations achieve their purpose. Uh, Blue Prism Cloud helps organizations and their employees to do more through the power of intelligent automation. Their digital workers absorb time-consuming tasks and empower employees to focus their energy on delivering against the company's mission. The fourth and final story is about Upepo, a Kenyan technology company that develops IoT solutions for the country's water sector. Upepo partners with utilities to deploy low-cost smart water metering devices that provide real-time monitoring and predictive insights for water infrastructure. Their goal? To provide a more holistic view of water consumption to enable access to water for people across the country. DHL is the world's largest logistics company. They have 380,000 employees working in more than 220 countries. The company delivers over 1.6 billion parcels per year. So here we are at the DHL Distribution Center in Madrid, where millions of packages are processed every year, averaging nearly 25,000 packages per hour. Hold on, let's get this right. Task management of the supply chain is one of the most difficult aspects of orchestration for logistics companies. Most companies have a first in, first out policy in their warehouses, which makes task management fairly straightforward. However, in the logistics industry, each package has unique data that determines how and when it is shipped. For example, overnight or ground delivery, this approach requires complex task prioritization and assignment across disparate sets of data and often results in little to no visibility to operational costs. To solve for these complexities, DHL turned to Blue Yonder to partner on addressing these challenges in their supply chain. Let's see how they did it. So when an order comes into the warehouse, it's first downloaded into the warehouse management system. Each item with an order is assigned as an individual task for warehouse associates to fulfill and complete. No two orders are alike. So as you can imagine, as orders increase in quantity, the volume of tasks generated becomes challenging to effectively and efficiently manage. Blue Yonder's Luminate Warehouse Tasking Solution allows companies like DHL to apply backward planning and task prioritization, meaning it looks across all orders to assign a target time associated with each task to help 
enable efficiencies for warehouse associates. Warehouses can assign goal times to complete each task. And using those estimations, Luminate creates optimized task schedules for warehouse associates. Each task type is given a priority level, and strategically aligned task prioritization accounts for buffers, allowing high priority orders to be fulfilled immediately while reprioritizing less time sensitive orders. Warehouse managers can monitor performance across their facility in an integrated dashboard where tasks are organized by associate and represented by a unique color. Associates capable of completing a certain task type also have corresponding color next to their name. While colors represent task, black bars represent schedule availability for warehouse associates. Since we see that there are few available employees with some extra time, we can send a Teams message to a warehouse coordinator to release more work to the facility. When we go back to the dashboard, we see that the availability in associate schedules has now been filled with assigned tasks. This type of automation is key when there are large influxes of orders and multiple associates available to meet demand. The solution has seen emergency replenishment reduction of more than 30% at various DHL facilities around the world. Next, let's meet Chuck. Chuck is a warehouse automation robot built by Six River Systems. Here at DHL, Chuck has become an integral part of warehouse task management. Robots are an incredible innovation to create efficiencies for manual or repetitive tasks. However, what you don't likely know is that most robots are built on different operating systems with varying customizations and lots of different programming languages. The result is an often costly and complex integration to incorporate these machines into a facility's operations. DHL needed a solution that would streamline these inefficiencies but still afford highly customizable options that meet site-specific needs. Together, Blue Yonder and DHL have launched Robotics Hub, a cloud-native application that enables accelerated onboarding of multiple robotics vendors into a single warehouse, giving customers greater flexibility in selecting and integrating robotics vendors into a solution. When a task gets assigned to the Robotics Hub, it translates it into a request from automation language to one the robot can use to process orders and collect items in the warehouse. Since the system is robot language agnostic, the platform significantly reduces programming efforts for onboarding automation devices into warehouse facilities. Here we can see on the left that we have a sample code displaying the name and product ID. But when it's translated over here on the right, we can see it's been updated to description and item number to coincide with the order in the system. So let's see how this works. <clears throat> so now Chuck can begin processing the order associated with these packages. Here you go, Chuck. The robot dashboard also provides insights into operational status and performance across the warehouse, showing us that there are actually eight active robots on the floor, five of which are completing a task or a tour and have collectively picked or sorted 1,800 items. Looks like our robot fleet is already 67% done with their tasks for the day. The first implementation of Chuck at the DHL warehouse in Madrid has already reduced integration time by 60%, a number DHL expects to increase to 90% over time. Automation solutions like these can help companies insulate and innovate their supply chains to keep business moving forward. Blue Yonder has been instrumental in equipping DHL with flexible and versatile solutions that can adapt to the unique needs of their operations, facilities, and support their employees around the world. With over 2,000 DHL warehousing sites worldwide, the impact is massive. Blue Yonder's solution is fulfilling their purpose of creating sustainable operations by helping build a more resilient, flexible supply chain at scale, even in these very challenging times. Over 70% of India's 1.3 billion citizens reside in non-urban areas across the country. 10 million small grocers are dispersed across these rural areas to serve the needs of the people living in these communities. Let's meet one of these grocers, located in the small village of Sayago, Vishwanath and Mangal Bise. They opened up their shop Ania Kirana over 40 years ago to sell groceries to their small village of just 1,500 residents. 
Traditionally, owners like the Bises would have had to travel long distances to buy goods in order to stock their store. This is a cumbersome exercise because they must arrange transportation, travel long distances, and make time to visit multiple wholesalers. And still, they struggle to procure the entire range of the products their customers demand because discounts are not available when purchasing in smaller quantities. The current pandemic has exacerbated these challenges for the Bisse family and their community. This is where Elastic Run's micro-distributor network steps into play in a critical role. It leverages existing idle transportation and logistics capacities from a wide audience of dispersed entrepreneurs, helping to reach more small business owners. Elastic Run is enabling rural grocers like the Bisse family to serve their remote customers with greater speed and product selection. Let's take a closer look at the challenges that these store owners face and the digital solutions Elastic Run provides. Elastic Run enables grocers to order products directly through their application or through a weekly visit from a micro distributor who uses the app to digitally take orders. The lightweight, low bandwidth mobile app enables micro distributors to remain digitally connected even with unreliable internet services in rural areas. Let's take a look. So, I open up the Elastic Run application, and immediately I see that machine learning based smart baskets suggest a set of products and quantities based on my ordering history and patterns and data and trends from the villages around me. I make a few changes and the suggested order is ready to go. All I have to do is hit send. The order is sent off to Elastic Run's order station system for fulfillment at a delivery center. The more I order, the smarter the app becomes because over time it learns about my inventory turnover and consumer purchasing habits. And it can take more accurate ordering suggestions that help me to optimize my operations and increase my profitability. So let's take a look at my order on the back end to see how the fulfillment team receives and processes it. The platform's engine uses data and machine learning algorithms to match consumer demand against available supply and labor capacity for real-time fulfillment. The order I submitted is sitting here in the queue and ready to be processed by a warehouse associate. A simple task automation bot helps the fulfillment team move through efficient execution of their daily operations. Based on the number of orders and the number of available vehicles, the system calculates optimal delivery routes. Traditionally, supply companies would have needed to make a large investment upfront in transportation assets, but now they can use available vehicles and labor on demand. It's a game changer for the gig economy. Well, it looks like my order has been assigned to a micro distributor and included on an upcoming route to my area. The micro distributor will deliver the goods, collect the payment, and complete the order. All of the data is captured, processed, and stored right here in the app, where it will continue to feed smart, customized recommendations for future orders. Elastic Run's platform is also helping brands gain exposure and reach new markets that were previously inaccessible through traditional distribution. Let's see what that might look like for a consumer goods company. The Brand Insights Portal provides instant access to a highly scalable national distribution network, eliminating time to market for new products to reach hundreds of thousands of first-time customers. Consumer goods companies can also access real-time data on the performance of their products to better monitor customer demand and inform future product development. Machine learning algorithms running in the background help enable logistics efficiencies for end-to-end -end accuracy of product placement fostering a mutually beneficial relationship between brands and consumers. In summary, Elastic Run has already unlocked access for 100,000 stores and 19,000 villages to participate in the digital economy. The result is a win-win. Customers can access a wider variety of goods. Kirano owners, like the Bises, can purchase these items at a lower cost. Micro distributors are busy fulfilling a healthy pipeline of orders, and brands have access to net new customers. This has become critical during the current global pandemic and ensures an uninterrupted supply of essential goods to last mile delivery. Elastic Run is creating greater social and economic impact for brands, grocers, and consumers in India. Now that's purpose-driven digital. So here we are at an NHS hospital in Colchester, England. Time out. All right, excuse me. There, that's better. 
So let me tell you about the East Suffolk and North Essex NHS Foundation Trust, or ESNEFT. Say that 10 times fast. The National Health Service, or NHS, is the publicly funded healthcare system for the United Kingdom. ESNEFT is a trust within the NHS that serves the North Essex and East Suffolk communities of East England and employs 10,000 staff across eight hospitals, care facilities, including the hospital behind me. ESNEF's mission is to provide the communities they serve with excellent health care. And their philosophy is simple. Time matters. They're committed to removing or improving the processes that take time from patients, families, and staff. ESNEF's purpose in doing so is to enable employees to do more with their day and allow patients to focus on their families and their own wellness. This philosophy has never been more important than it is today as the industry continues to face challenges stemming from the pandemic. With their mutual focus on innovating to improve efficiency, both Phoenix Software and Blue Prism Cloud have empowered ESNEF to achieve their mission during a critical time. Over the past two years, Phoenix Software has been working with ESNEF to roll out modern productivity tools and collaboration tools like Microsoft 365, Surface devices, including Surface Hubs, and most recently, Windows Virtual Desktop. During the pandemic, these solutions have enabled frontline workers to stay connected, be efficient, and safe while continuing to serve their patients. Their hospitals are also using Microsoft Sway to help deliver daily COVID-19 briefings to staff members and leveraging Microsoft Teams live events for the entire org, as well as regular calls and meetings. And by the way, these meetings have increased by over 500% since January. Phoenix Software is fulfilling their purpose to deliver innovative ways to help customers like ESNEF empower their employees and create value for their patients. Now let's turn to Blue Prism Cloud and how they are leveraging their platform to support ESNEFT. The global pandemic has shocked and strained administrative staff across healthcare facilities and created a substantial backlog of paperwork. Blue Prism Cloud has been instrumental in helping address this challenge through their digital worker solutions that work across different data sources to collate patient information into a single source of truth, saving their staff valuable time that can be re redirected towards patient care. So I want to show you a demo of what's been built here. A critical initiative for healthcare organizations globally is antibody testing, which detects and measures the presence of antibodies in a blood sample related to infectious disease to determine if someone has previously contracted a virus like COVID-19. These results help healthcare officials to get a more holistic picture of infection rates and even collect life-saving plasma for sick patients. ESNEF needed a solution that would allow them to administer testing at scale without causing a service bottleneck for their staff. The challenge was complex, but the answer was relatively simple, automation. Let's see that solution in action. So if a citizen wants to request an antibody test, they would first visit the ESNEF website uh, to fill out a simple questionnaire created with Microsoft Forms. I simply select the hospital, fill in my name, add some basic information and hit continue. I then get redirected to a set of standard COVID-19 questions to determine if I am eligible for antibody testing, helping to appropriately prioritize my test. Once I complete the short questionnaire, my form is loaded into a pending queue and picked up by a Blue Prism Cloud digital worker. So let's take a look at what happens now. On the back end, the digital worker receives a notification to review the form and logs into the online appointment booking service embedded in ESNEF's digital exchange platform. Using the information from my form, the digital worker searches the system for my account or creates a new one. It looks like it's found me here and already extracted the information from the data and the antibody testing form that I filled out. So this is all powered by Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Bookings. The digital worker is then able to automate the entire scheduling process. And exactly 29 seconds after I submitted the form, here's an email letting me know that my request for an antibody test has been approved and scheduled. Blue Prism's Cloud's customizable dashboard hub gives ESNEF's administrators visibility into how many digital workers are currently running, the various workloads these automation bots are taking on, as well as processing time associated with each task. Digital workers have vetted, processed, and quickly secured and registered over 20,000 tests in just the last four weeks alone. 
Traditional methods of processing this volume of engagement and scheduling would have been impossible for hospital staff to manage. Digital workers are providing an invaluable service that enables healthcare employees to really focus their attention on delivering exceptional patient care. During the first six weeks of the pandemic, Blue Prism Cloud deployed five new automation projects to help save care teams more than 7,415 hours. That's almost 200 weeks of testing time. These results aren't limited to ESNEFT. Automated solutions like this one and many others can be accessed by any NHS organization across the entire UK. This drives digital transformation at scale. So in conclusion, both Blue Prism Cloud and Phoenix Software have been critical partners for ESNEFT, helping them give the much-deserved time back to ESNEFT's incredible frontline workers. It's powerful to see what's possible when partners collaborate. So here we are just outside of Kenya's capital city of Nairobi in Kikuyu, a village that's home to roughly 320,000 residents and a strong agricultural economy. Kikuyu is home to Gitaru Water, a water utility company whose mission is to provide clean, quality, and affordable water services to communities. Like many other Kenyan towns, Kikuyu faces the daily challenge of ongoing water scarcity and a challenged economy. It is expected that the demand for water in Kenya will increase 81% by 2030. Today, only 55% of the population currently has access to affordable water. It's a critical problem that requires urgent attention. Compounding these challenges is the loss of water through leaks, theft, transport, or other factors. In fact, it's estimated that 42% of Kenya's treated water is lost as non-revenue water, costing the sector an estimated $76 million in annual revenue. As needs become more urgent, technology is playing a critical role in helping to address the challenges for both water companies and their consumers. Upepo's robust water management information system, along with their low-cost IoT smart metering devices, is helping Gitaru Water measure water consumption and enabling them to intervene before potential issues become a problem. Let's see how Upepo is helping this customer. So, here we have a standard water pipe that traditionally would require manual inspection and maintenance. Next to it, we see Upapu's smart water meter that provides real-time monitoring of water infrastructure. Let's take a closer look at how this works. So here inside the pipe, we see Upepo's IoT sensors collecting real-time data that allows utility companies to not only accurately measure and manage water remotely, but also predict future trends in consumption to help improve water supply. Let's check out some of Upepo's insights here generated through this technology. So this is a view from Gutaru's water meters across the town. It shows us a comprehensive view of all of Gutaru's connected sites, but we can also drill down into individual locations. In fact, here's the pipe I am in right now. It sits over here. The sensors are enabling a wealth of insights to help utility companies better monitor operations and react to and even prevent issues. It looks like there's a flag on the dashboard alerting us to a potential issue in this very pipe. We can see how much water this resident has consumed over the last week, as well as the water temperature, meter humidity, battery voltage, and operational status of the meter. It appears that the temperature is high, as is the water pressure. We know from historical data that when the pipe temperature is high, this can result in elevated water pressure, and together they increase the risk of a leak. With these insights, Gitaru can investigate and proactively address problems before any real damage occurs. Every drop counts when facing water scarcity challenges. Many cities have designated water rationing days that restrict access to water for a limited amount of time. Pipe insights like these are critical during rationing to help utility companies ensure equitable access while managing finite supply. There, that's better. Uh, helping utility companies is only part of the answer. Ensuring that consumers are served is also critical. Traditionally, water billing systems require a utility's employees to physically visit every meter, read each individual gauge, and input that data into a spreadsheet. 
As you can imagine, this manual process is prone to error, especially with legacy gauges. So water usage insights are also important to residents to ensure billing reflects actual usage. Here in Upepo's application, residents can monitor and review their current and prior consumption. This is especially helpful during dry seasons when water is being rationed, as they can track not only their usage, but more importantly, the remaining supply. Residents can also opt in to app notifications or SMS text alerts so that they know when water is about to be rationed uh, and turned on so that they can ensure they fill their water tanks in time. In addition, when available, residents can use the application to purchase additional water all from their phone. As Upepo expands coverage of their smart metering solutions and more users opt in across Kenya, supporting cost-efficient and reliable operations at scale becomes very challenging. Although they have invested in expanding their infrastructure, hosting hundreds of IoT devices can become quite expensive. To combat this, Upepo ingeniously moved to hosting their IoT devices on public telco networks. Seamless real-time water monitoring at scale is now a close reality, while helping to keep operations as affordable for residents as $2 a month. Upepo is continuing to enhance capabilities to deploy low-cost IoT devices across Kenya and bring better water access to more communities. Their smart metering devices are helping harness the power of real-time data to drive actionable insights for both the water company as well as the consumer. Upepo's solution enables proactive intervention that empowers customers like the Gutaru Water Company to reduce water loss and increase revenue as they deliver intelligent water management services to upwards of 21,000 residents. Upepo is truly fulfilling their purpose of ensuring that water is accessible to people across the country. Now that's purpose-driven digital. So I hope all of you enjoyed the opportunity to choose your own adventure as a part of this year's keynote. Look, all four of those stories, no matter which one you picked, uh, really had an excellent uh, frame of purpose. This notion of purpose-driven digital really will fill our future here. And I'm really excited about the opportunity that we have across the entire partner ecosystem to work with customers to bring that to life. You're gonna hear from Nick Parker talking about our solution areas and everything from the edge to the cloud um, and how those solution areas form the ingredients for these purpose-driven digital uh, scenarios that we wanna go and pursue with customers. From there, you'll hear from Gabriella and she'll talk a lot about the how and the programs that we're putting forward in FY21 to help you on these journeys. We're really excited and can't wait to get started. So when you think about purpose, purpose has many, many meanings. And every company, as I said earlier, has its own purpose. And they may seek to find it differently and through different ways. But I wanna tell you one last story about purpose uh, a little closer to home and what it's meant to me and my family. Um, we've done a lot of work, uh, of course, in telemedicine, but this is telemedicine of a slightly different kind, the notion of virtual veterinary care. We've worked with pet care and our partner Global Logic to really push the envelope, if you will, on how we deliver care. This is my dog, Kiko, uh, and this is Pauline from Pet Care. Hi, Pauline, how are you? Hi, great, thank you. Hi, Jackson, hi, Kiko. So I was wondering, Pauline, if you might tell uh, our audience here a little bit about uh, how you've embarked upon this journey of virtual veterinary care. Sure. So near the beginning of the pandemic within the Mars Vet Health Ecosystem, we started with about six hospitals using Teams and rolled out to 800 hospitals in 30 days. Since then, we've delivered over 1,000 virtual care visits in just the last two months. It's been incredible. Wow, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit about how these virtual visits go. <laughs> uh, well, get comfortable. Oh, she's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> So for something like a wellness checkup, we would start with getting an idea of how Kiko has been doing at home. I'd ask you about how she was eating, how she was sleeping and exercising. And then if you're willing to, to provide some help, we would walk through some of her exam. Would you would you like to try? Um, sure. We'll see how we'll see how I do. So, Judson, can you show me Kiko's ears, please? Sure. So I'd like you to lift it up. And why don't you take a peek because um, and tell me, do you see any redness in there? Do Nope, they look their normal, healthy, happy pink. Perfect. So then I'd like to see her mouth. Can you just lift up her gums for me and just sure. I'd like to check the you color? Teeth. 
She's just showing me her smile. <laughs> so typically we would look for, look at her teeth, look at her gums and her color yep. to make sure that uh, her circulatory system was working. And then finally, we'll do one more if you're up for it. Sure. Can you show me her paw? Yep. Just sit it up and I'd like to see paws. just in between those toes. Nice. In a typical visit, we'd ask more questions. We'd go through more and I'd get uh, some close-ups just to make sure that I was able to see what I needed to. Yeah. But um, other than that, we would wrap up and say, you know what, she looks really good. And I think you're doing a great job. Or we could address any of the concerns that you had that we found. That's cool. Well, listen, I want to thank you because the pet care team have really taken care of our dog over the last 14 years. And we had really quite a scary time about a year ago. And you all gave her a pretty life-saving operation and uh, have given us another year with Kiko at least. And we're really thankful for that. And the other thing I would say is, is that as we look at about how technology can help um, companies sort of rethink the future, these virtual vet visits are actually quite helpful because from her surgery a year ago, she's been pretty anxious about going to see the vet in, in you know, subsequent visits. And you can see, even though uh, we have her on camera here, um, she's quite a bit more relaxed than she would be in the, in the veterinary setting. So um, it's super helpful. We're very appreciative of the work that you're doing. And I'm hoping it's having the impact that um, you all want to see as well. Yeah, absolutely. And first off, I'm so glad that we could provide the care. And that's what we're here to do is to give quality time and enhance the care that we can provide pets. Um, these virtual visits have been have given us an ability to provide the care to pets while keeping the safety of our associates at the core of our priorities. But just as you mentioned, providing that access to care for pets who might not otherwise be seen, especially those who are high stress, this is going to change how we practice veterinary medicine and therefore provide better care for our pets long term. That's awesome, Pauline. Well, listen, thanks again for joining us here at Inspire. And thanks again for all of the great work that you're doing for Kiko and for other pets around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you and you're welcome. And to all of you, thank you very much for being a part of Inspire this year. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, and from Kiko and I, have an awesome FY21. And cut, that's a wrap. Nice job. <laughs> oh, look at that. Snacks. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Thanks, Pauline. That was very cool.